Hey guys, what's up? Hope everyone's uh, had a really awesome 2023 so far. Uh, in terms of uh, music, I know I sure did, because uh, we're going to be taking a look at uh, some noteworthy albums of uh, 2023, or at least in my opinion. Very noteworthy. Now, I'm not going to go into any like uh, you know like top so-and-so lists, because honestly I suck at doing those kinds of lists. I, I just narrow it down to albums that I like, that I think they're fun. Or albums that I just absolutely love, and there's a lot of albums that I do love on here, but we're going to start off with uh, some of the fun stuff uh, first. And uh, we're starting off with the Glass Casket self-titled EP. Now, these guys haven't put out an album since, uh, I want to say, 2006's uh, uh, Desperate Man's Diary, and... Um, for those of you who don't know who Glass Casket is, it's uh, composed, it's comprised of uh, members of uh, Between the Bear to Me, uh, such as uh, Dusty Waring on guitar and Blake Richardson on drums. Uh, you also got uh, Adam Cody, who has had a brief stint with uh, another band called uh, Wretched for, for a while, but I think he recently recently left them, and I think they got their original vocalist back. And I think for this album, they've had a uh, Wes Hotch. I hope they got him saying his last name right. Uh, I don't know if he was either, you know, doing session work for this album or what, but, uh, I mean, you probably know Wes, uh, from his time spent in the Faceless, or even currently with, uh, with the Luvial, but, um, yeah, I was actually kind of surprised when I heard that, uh, these guys were getting back together just to bring out this EP from out of nowhere, and, uh, you know, after listening to it a couple times, I mean, I still think it's a pretty fun, uh, listen to go through, um, I mean, it's not quite as uh, frantic as uh, something you'd expect on uh, their you know, previous um, full length, or, well, their debut full length, rather, uh, We Are Gathered Here Today, which uh, is a lot you know, crazier, a lot more spastic uh, sounding. But I think that this EP kind of sits somewhere in between um, We Are Gathered Here Today and Desperate Man's Diary, and I do like both those albums. Uh, some songs that I really do like off this EP would have to be uh, Let Them Go and uh, Prison of uh, Empathy. So, yeah, if uh, you want some good old-fashioned, uh, you know, just fun deathcore, then, uh, that I de then I definitely recommend uh, the self-titled EP from Glass Casket. Alright, speaking of uh, deathcore and uh, fun releases, we've got uh, Distant with uh, Heritage. Now, I've... Uh... I really haven't been listening to these guys all that much, uh, save for their previous album, uh, Aeons of, uh, of Oblivion, I believe, which I, I still really do like that album. It came out in 2021. Uh, this album, I think it's uh, kind of trying to take after uh, Aeons of Oblivion, but it's got a lot more electronic and glitchy elements uh, thrown in. and. Uh, I mean, it was, it, was a, it was pretty fun on the first listen, but I really haven't gone back and listened to this as much as I should be. I might have to fix that, but I got plenty of time to do that. Uh, one song that I would definitely recommend off this album would have to be uh, Argent Justice because, well, I mean, it's a really fun, straightforward, just beat down of a song, but it's got, like, a shit ton of uh, guest vocals. Um, uh, let me see. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. You got, uh, you got you know, some Suicide Silence, you got uh, Amur, you got Angel Maker, Carcosa, Crown Magnetar, 1056, Pale Face. Uh, I forget who else is on there, but uh, there, there's a lot of um, guest appearances on there. And unlike uh, a lot of other big, long, drawn-out songs, <coughs> Beyond Deviation, uh, they implement a lot of uh, guest appearances. At, at least they give these guys uh, time to, to shine in their respective areas. Not just for like, you know, have everyone there for like a few seconds and they have, you know, some big name just take up like, I don't know, 20, 25% of the song or whatever. Yeah, everybody gets, you know, just equal amounts of time uh, on here. and They, they, they kind of, you know, spread everybody out uh, across this song. And I think it's only like, what? seven, eight minutes or something other, but, but yeah, I mean, I think this is a pretty fun EP, no, not EP, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm so hung up on the, um, on that glass casket EP, but no, but this is a pretty fun album to go through, I just might have to sit down and listen to this one, uh, yeah, Heritage by Distant, and, uh, not Heritage by Opeth, so, don't get confused there, guys. Alright, this next one, this one came in pretty late, and, uh, 
I wasn't even sure if I was even going to include this one to begin with because uh, I'll be completely honest with you guys. When I first, you know, heard this band, like actually sat down and listened to them like several months ago, I just kind of pushed them off to the side because uh, I don't know. Just um, I didn't really, you know, get it at first, but uh, it wasn't until a couple days or so after Christmas that. Uh, I finally sat down and um, listened to these guys, and uh, <sighs> well, I just gotta say, Sleep Token with uh, Take Me Back to Eden. I would probably say, as somebody who listens to a lot of metal, I'd probably say this might be a little bit of a guilty pleasure <laughs> uh, album to go through, but but I, I, I guess listening back to it a couple more times, I... Uh, I found myself, you know, kind of liking it more and more. Um, so I think one of the hardest uh, things I was trying to kind of wrap my head around was that uh, just going back and forth between, you know, some of the metal elements, and I do mean some, and uh, a lot more of the electronic and R&B type of stuff. And uh, well, I will say that the dudes uh, singing on here is far better than Periphery. I, I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for saying that, and a lot of shit for... You know, putting this band, uh, you know, on my list somewhere, but, but I mean, I think I think it's a pretty fun list, and uh, I mean, when I when I first um, you know checked out this uh, this band uh, after listening to, listening to this album, the only thing I could really you know think was it's kind of like Deftones without Chino's uh, crazy vocals and a lot more electronic and R and B. It's thrown in there for good measure, but yeah, I think this is a pretty fun. Uh, Pretty fun to listen, and I've kind of caught myself singing along to a couple of these uh, songs. Not necessarily on the same pitch, but hey, I try. Uh, some songs I actually do like on here would have to be, uh, let's see, I know a lot of people go ape shit over uh, The Summoning, which, I mean, that that's a really fun song. Um, the ones I would probably say would have to be uh, Vor, uh, The Apparition, which... Which I think was the first uh, Sleep Token song that I listened to all the way through before, you know, I decided, you know, I want to go ahead and uh, listen to the rest of this, you know, just give it a proper sit down and listen to it. But yeah, The Apparition, uh, Rain, uh, that one's pretty fun, and uh, the title track, uh, Take Me Back to Eden. <laughs> now, I know this album may not necessarily be for everybody, though, but, uh, I mean, hey... I, I do love my fair share of death metal, and I do, you know, like some bits of clean vocals but when they're done right. And, uh, I mean, th this one's kind of a little bit of an acquired taste, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I actually do like this album quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, Sleep Token, Take Me Back to Eden. Alright, so with all the fun stuff out of the way, now let's get onto some albums that I genuinely do like. Uh, these are some of my favorites uh, for 2023. And, um, well, since I mentioned something about death metal, well, there's no way I can actually segue to this one properly. But anyways, Fester Decay with Reality Rotten to the Core. Uh, the only thing I can really say about this band is that if you love Carcass, like Symphonies of Sickness era Carcass, then this is out one album that I would definitely, definitely recommend uh, to anybody who's looking for that kind of sound, you know, just that absolutely gross, just sickening production, just, well, and that's kind of what you expect uh, when you get into any kind of gore grind at all. And, and honestly, gore grind's uh, one uh, type of metal I really don't listen to all that much. I'm really, really picky about, uh, you know, some other bits I listen to, just outside of my usual stuff. But, uh, yeah, some songs I would actually recommend here would have to be a Hash to Tongue, Disintegration of Organs, Aborticide, From the Dark Tomb, Exposing the Skin Tissue, and I will warn you about that song at the end of it. I don't know, you know, what the hell is going on. I'm assuming that somebody at the end of that session just had some allergies and they were just blowing their nose. So <laughs> just warn you about that one uh, when you listen to this song. And uh, Carcass's Revenge. <clears throat> so yeah, anybody's uh, looking to scratch that uh, Symphonies of Sickness uh, itch, then um, I would definitely recommend uh, Reality Rotten to the Core by Fester Decay. All right, next uh, we have uh, another band that's uh, you know it's a bit of a newcomer uh, for me. Um, I really haven't you know heard these guys until like. 
several months ago when I actually got recommended to them by their drummer, and uh, that band is uh, Tegmentum with Evolvement. I guess that this is actually some pretty tasty uh, technical death metal uh, without getting too, like, laser precise, you know, stuff like Archspire and whatnot. Um, you know, th these guys, you know, do have some pretty tasty riffs and song structures and whatnot, and it actually has a, um, a, a former member of uh, Fallujah, uh, Andrew Baird, um, playing drums in there. Oh, he actually recommended uh, this album. To, well, he suggested that me and a couple of others uh, in his uh, Discord actually check this album out, and I was actually pretty glad that I did. It's, uh, like I said, some really fun, tasty, uh, very flavorful uh, technical death metal. Uh, some songs I'd recommend would have to be uh, Moments Ago, Accolades, uh, Anigdala, I hope you got them saying that one right, uh, I Remain, and uh, Gospel of Sand. So, uh, yeah, take Menem with Evolvement if you really want some pretty tasty uh, tech death. Alright, so strip stripping away the, uh, the technical uh, bits, uh, we're going to get down and dirty with some uh, good old-fashioned Acacia Strain with Step Into the Light. Now, I know they have a, they have a, a second half uh, called uh, In Failure Will Follow, uh, where the latter is more like slow down, you know, kind of uh, like super doomy Black Sabbath, um, you know, kind of stuff, you know, mixed in with the usual heavy grittiness uh, that the Acacia Strain only knows how to deliver. Uh, Step Into the Light is pretty much, well, like the really upbeat, just absolutely ferocious and pounding, you know, hardcore, deathcore that you'd come to expect from the Acacia Strain, with some more spastic elements thrown in, like, hmm, you really don't want to associate blast beats uh, with the Acacia Strain, but, um, <laughs> I mean, when I listened to some of the stuff, when I listened to a couple of songs on here and I heard them uh, doing some blasts, I was like, wait, is this even the Acacia Strain anymore? And, I, and don't take that the wrong way, though. I mean, I do love uh, the Acacia Strain. And I actually do really love this album, too. Uh, some songs I'd recommend off of this one that would have to be uh, Flourishing, Cast Blood, Fresh Bones, Open Wound, Sinkhole. Is this really happening? Yes, it is. And uh, none of us has to be here. So, uh, yeah, if you want the, uh, the same ferocious, uh, you know, just absolutely... You know, punch to the face uh, kind of music that you'd expect with the Acacia Strain, and uh, this album, Step Into the Light, is no exceptions. And I would also recommend uh, And Failure Would Follow. If you, if you want to hear these guys go a little bit slower, a little bit moodier, a little bit doomier, but um, yeah, I kind of prefer this one a little bit more personally. Alright, speaking of doomy, or rather dreary, and uh, Nightmarish sounding. We have Nightmare with Deformity Adrift. Now, this may very well be one of the creepiest albums that I have on my list. This is this dissonant, droning death metal at its absolute most horrifying. Um, if you ever wanted to know what it's uh, like, you know, having War from a Harlot's Mouth, uh, just slow down and just be much more vicious and be much more evil than this is uh, this is what you get. I say War from a Harlot's Mouth because it actually has uh, one of their guitarists uh, in there. Uh, Simon, I forgot what his last name is, but yeah, he's in there. Uh, I want to say Paul Seidel uh, from uh, War from a Harlot's Mouth is on here also, or maybe he's just doing session drums, I don't know. Um, we also have uh, Keith Marrow, um, as everybody knows, he you know, usually does his own thing here on YouTube. Uh, he's also got another little uh, side project uh, with uh, Alex Webster, Jeff Loomis, and um, uh, Alex Rudinger uh, called uh, Conquering Dystopia, uh, which is a lot more just like kind of groovier, sort of technical uh, metal in a way. But this one, it's horrifying, it's dissonant, it's droning, it's just nightmarish. And uh, it's really, really good if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, songs I'd recommend would have to be a Brutalist Imperator, a Baptismal Tomb, Suffering Beyond Death, Tough Befell, I hope you got them saying that one right, and uh, Obliterated Shrine. So, um, yeah, Nightmare, Deformity of Drift. And uh, 
If you listen to this album, try to have any nightmares afterwards. All right, next up, we've got Memoriam with Rise to Power. Um, this is the spirit of Bolt Thrower pretty much living on. Uh, I say Bolt Thrower because the vocalist Carl Willits is actually fronting this band and has been uh, since its inception. Now, this is just some really, really, really fun death metal. Um, you know, still has, you know, lyrics about, you know, war, the atrocities committed during and during war and, you know, the aftermath and whatnot. It's just, it's just a really, really fun uh, death metal album. Uh, songs that I would, well, really fun uh, death metal album that carries that spirit of bolt fur, but has uh, a little bit more uh, melody uh, thrown in. And I'm not saying that both or didn't have any melodic uh, hooks as well. I mean, they were like really tasty uh, melodic hooks. But these, one, these ones here in Memoriam, they definitely get a little bit more melodic uh, in that sense. Yeah, songs I would definitely recommend uh, from this album would have to be uh, Never Forget, Never Again, uh, Total War, Conflict is Within, Annihilation's Dawn, and the title track, Rise to Power. So uh, yeah, Memoriam with Rise to Power. All right, so uh, this one was a bit of this next one is a little bit of a, a late comer uh, for me, mainly because when I looked at the album cover here, I originally thought it was going to be some kind of a death doom uh, thing, and I'm not really the biggest uh, you know doom uh, fan or stoner uh, metal fan, and I just kind of pushed this album off to the side. But when I sat down and listened to it and getting some recommendations from other people, I was wrong and I was very pleasantly surprised because we have Horrendous with Ontological Mysterium. Yeah, you take a look at that album cover and, uh, <laughs> I mean, between that and uh, Nightmares, Deformity, Adrift, uh, good luck trying to sleep tonight. <laughs> No, nah, but uh, th this is like some really, really fun progressive death metal uh, done very, very well. Um, you know, think of uh, death uh, from human and, well, towards the, ver towards the very end, um, uh, Sound of Perseverance era death. And of course, you know, Cynic, you know, just any, any bands that, uh, that you know really excel at progressive death metal. This is pretty much uh, what you come to expect um, <clears throat> uh, from this band. And one of the things that I really like about this album, not just because, well, it's progressive death metal, but also the production on here. It definitely harkens back to more of that kind of old school uh, death metal in a way without getting too, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, too, well, <laughs> Yeah, the production on the most death metal albums back in the day weren't necessarily the best uh, compared to well, where they're at now. But this one, it's big, it's cavernous sounding, it's very spacey, but everything sits you know, in the mix so well. It's like the, the perfect progressive death metal puzzle set. Uh, that's probably the best way I can really describe this album. Uh, you know, you got a lot of really cool progressive uh, bits thrown in there, lots of really tasty riffing, you know, the vocals, you know, it's just pretty much like one of the best uh, prog death albums uh, for this for that year, uh, if I do say so. Um, some, album, some songs I'd recommend on here, and I'm probably going to butcher a lot of these titles here. Uh, Chrysopia? Uh, I don't know if I said that one right, but at least they got a little... Uh, Thing in parentheses, uh, archaeology of dawn. Yeah, I can't believe I butchered that one, and that's just a really easy word. <laughs> uh, Aurora ne Neoterica, Cult of uh, Shadoa, Ontological Mysterium, and The Death Nail Ringeth. So, um, yeah, if you're looking to get some really tasty progressive death metal, uh, but still kind of keep it sort of old school in a way, then I would definitely recommend Ontological Mysterium by Horrendous. Now going to the other side of death metal, uh, where you know I talked a little bit about uh, you know progressive death metal, you know with really really good production, we're gonna go to some old school death metal worship with uh, well that exact kind of production that associates itself with the uh, old school death metal with Outer Heaven, Infinite Psychic Depths. 
Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I maybe listened to one song uh, before this album came out, and um, you know, I thought it was really, really good, but I kind of uh, skipped over this album. I really didn't think much of it um, you know, afterwards. Like, I guess I just kind of got lost in uh, some other albums. But when I was uh, going through uh, some others' uh, reviews and uh, you know, just picking out some albums, it's, uh, you know, I thought, you know, Maybe I need to, you know, kind of pad out this whole list a little bit, and I gotta say, this is some really, really good old school death metal uh, worship. You know, the the production is every bit as grimy as you could expect uh, with old with old school death metal. Very tasty uh, riff work, you know, awesome vocals. Uh, songs I would definitely recommend on here would have to be a uh, Soul Remnants. Fragmented Suspension, Rotting Stone slash DMT, which was the one song that I heard by those guys, uh, Star Crusher, Palisite Chambers, and War of Transcendence. So uh, yeah, Outer Heaven with Infinite Psychic Depths if uh, you're looking to get your old school death metal fix. Alright, speaking of old school and speaking of death metal, uh, where those two things don't necessarily have to coincide with one another, we're going to be talking a little bit about dying fetus make them beg for death now i'll be honest with you guys i'm not really super well versed in the dying fetus as much as i should be um the only two albums that i do have well three including this one uh that i do have are a uh, war of attrition and um descent into depravity and i've listened to a little bit of the, some of the earlier stuff um you know one shot one kill um kill your mother and do something with a dog or whatever it is. I mean, I'm not monetizing any any of this, uh, but you, you know what I mean. You, you, you guys can fill in the blanks. And I think I've listened to maybe a, a song or two off their previous two albums, uh, Reign Supreme and uh, The Wrong One to Fuck With. <laughs> what a title. Uh, but when I actually sat down and um, uh, listened to this album, I was like, okay, so uh, this is pretty much... What we come to expect with Dying Fetus is like really, really brutal, really precise, very tight drumming from uh, from Trey Williams. Uh, just very, very intricate guitar and bass work between, um, well, guitar, bass, and vocal work uh, between um, uh, John Gallagher and uh, and Sean Beasley. Yeah, th those those three they they've been making some damn good death metal for, for like who knows how long uh and you know, this album is no exception I, I really love the production on here everything just it's very tight very precise um it's not like overproduced or anything but er everything just fits you know just everything fits like a glove on uh songs i would definitely recommend uh would have to be feast of ashes throw them into the van uh, which is a short but very sweet uh, piece uh, when the trend ends and uh, raise in victory, raise in defeat. So uh, yeah, dying fetus, make them beg for death, and uh, beg us beg for some more, um, you know, quality albums. Cause uh, this is definitely a quality album. <clears throat> All right, next we got the Zenith Passage with Data Elysium. Now I've heard of uh, the Zenith Passage, but never really sat down and listened to any of their stuff until. Ooh, about a week ago, give or take. Uh, well, a little less than a week ago, but uh, yeah, this is. Um, I mean, I know I mentioned something about uh, was it Tegmentum, you know, giving like making like really tasty, uh, flavorful technical death metal. Uh, this uh, the Zenith passage here is a lot more precise uh, in that regard. Uh, not as like batshit crazy as Archspire, but uh, this is still another kind of tasty bit of a technical death metal. Um, and one of the things that I really, really do like about this album, aside from the crazy riff work, is the production. Uh, much like with the Dying Fetus, except everything, everything's uh, not nearly as uh, bright sounding. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that the previous album that I talked about was you know, really harsh in any way, but everything, again, just fits so snugly into the mix. Um, songs that I would definitely recommend would have to be uh, Axiom of Error, uh, when I heard that opening riff with the blasts uh, kicking in, I could not help but just, you know, just start headbanging in like so many different ways. It's, it's just a really, really fun song. Uh, let's see, Synaptic uh, Deprivation, Deletion Cult, uh, Divinertia 1 and 2, 
uh, Automated Twilight, and the tile track, uh, Data Elysium. So, um, yeah, if you want some really good, really precise, but very, very fun technical death metal, then I would definitely recommend uh, Data Elysium by the Zenith Passage. All right, next we have another band that, uh, honestly, I didn't think that they were going to put out another album uh, after their previous one back in uh, 2013, I'd want to say. Yeah, I think it was like 2013. But honestly, I'm glad that these guys did come back after 10 long years. We have Man Must Die, The Pain Behind It All. Now, I first remember listening to these guys, or first hearing about these guys um, back in like 2008, 2009 or whatever it is when I had a, a digital cable. Um, for anybody who's had digital cable, you know, like uh, towards the back half, uh, well not that far back with those other sus channels, but no, like um, towards the back half of uh, all the channels you have on there, you know, you get like uh, these... Um, Music stations, you know, before you know, Sirius XM uh, blew up, um, but I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Uh, and the uh, the one uh, one of the channels I used to sit on, you know, kind of regularly was a uh, Music Choice uh, Metal. I think it was uh, simply called a uh, Metal. That I think they had all the the genres specifically named. Uh, nothing nothing like too crazy like what Sirius XM does, like with uh, you know liquid metal or octane rock or what have you um but yeah i remember listening to um a gainsayer off of um uh, no tolerance for imperfection which i absolutely love that album uh very 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 awesome uh death metal very fun very riffy and this one um it kind of has some of that but it's a little bit more groove centric uh but hey i do love me some good groovy death metal uh, and, of course, it still has, you know, the crazy, you know, riff, riff work and uh, drum work and whatnot that you kind of expect with this uh, kind of music. But, uh, yeah, ten long years uh, since, uh, well, their previous album, um, Peace Was Never an Option, which I absolutely love that album, too. Uh, some songs I'd recommend would have to be the, uh, the title track, uh, The Pain Behind It All, uh, in, in the Hour Before Your Death. I really love that... Uh, you know, melodic, uh, trim-picked uh, riff at the beginning. Uh, Click Hate, that one's very fun. And uh, Bring Me the Head of the King, which I think was the, the first single uh, for this album. Uh, very, very, very fun, fast, kind of grindy uh, death metal there. <clears throat> so yeah, if you want to know how the, how the Scots uh, do it, then uh, that I would definitely recommend uh, The Pain Behind It All by Man Must Die. All right, next up, uh, I'm sure you guys could probably, uh, you know, could probably assume that, well, probably guess that, uh, you know what my next uh, bit is, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say it. Why not? Index by Three Teeth. Now, I had a buddy of mine uh, say, like, hey, check out this song by Three Teeth uh, called uh, American Landfill, and I remember listening to that, and I was like, okay, this is some really, really good industrial metal. And then I listened to the rest of the album that had that song in there, and I and I thought, okay, so Metal War, that's a, that's a damn good album, and uh, I think that one came out in 2021, if I remember right. But whatever whatever the case may be, I got that album. It's really really good, and I could definitely say the same thing about, about uh, Index as well. You know, it's just the same good old uh, you know modern industrial metal that we all come to know and love. Um, it even has several guest appearances on here, uh, mostly by uh, Mick Gordon of uh, Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal fame, and who's also did some work with some of the Wolfenstein games. But everybody knows him more from uh, from the two Doom, from the two uh, recent uh, Doom games. But, um, but yeah, songs I would definitely recommend on here would have to be um, uh, Acme Death Machine, Slum Planet, Merchant of the Void, Higher Than Death. And um, and drift. But yeah, if you want some really, really good, real high quality industrial metal, then uh, I would definitely suggest Index by Three Teeth. All right, so next we have a two-parter here. Um, this is a band that's, uh, that I first uh, became uh, familiar with after me and a buddy, after me and a, a VTuber buddy of mine, uh, Demon Lord Kieran. Uh, went on a bit of a, a band camp dive uh, one day, and we both uh, discovered this band, and that is 
Psycho Frame. Yes, I am taking. A, I, yes, I do have both their EPs up. Remote God Seeker on the left and Automatic Death Protocol on the right. This, these two EPs right over here, they 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 capture that that sort of old school MySpace era deathcore where you know it's just really fast, really brutal. You know, it doesn't need to rely on a lot of the you know more common uh, tropes that you associate with deathcore. You know, like a lot of the overly symphonic or blackened elements or even the um, uh, crazy tunnel throat stuff that everybody and their grandmother seems to be doing uh, these days and you know, I'll definitely bring up a good tunnel throat vocalist uh, later on <laughs> in this uh, in this whole uh, list but, but yeah I mean this is some like really really fun just no nonsense MySpace era deathcore uh, songs I would recommend off of both these EPs uh, let's see, for Remote God Seeker, I'd suggest uh, Internal Death Trance and uh, Dragging Nazarene. And uh, for Automatic Death Protocol, I'd say uh, Further Showing of Violence, Bone Crown Deformity, and The Plot to Nuke the Midwest. So, uh, yeah, if anybody's um, wanting to take a trip back in time and listen to some good old-fashioned MySpace era deathcore, then I would definitely suggest these two EPs from Psycho Frame. And still sticking with Deathcore, we have Crown Magnetar, Everything Bleeds. Now, <laughs> the really, really messed up thing is that uh, when I initially made uh, my, my first uh, draft uh, list of um, albums of 2023, I accidentally left this one off. And I, I, I remember, was it when this came out, I listened to it all the way through and I was like, oh, this is some really, really good technical Deathcore. Um, not like super technical like the Zenith Passage or Arch Spire or Tegmentum or whatever it is. It's just, uh, it, it's just got some techie elements thrown in for good measure, but it's still at its heart just straight up deathcore. Just no nonsense, just pound you in the face until, you know, there's nothing left but a flesh crater or whatever. That, that kind of deathcore. Songs that I would definitely recommend uh, from this album would have to be a uh, Nail Funeral, The Level Beneath, uh, Unholy Next Stab, which I absolutely love that song, <laughs> and uh, Only the Spine Remains, which um, kind of sounds like uh, well Sub Zero doing his thing from a uh, Mortal Kombat, I believe. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of feel bad for almost uh, accidentally leaving this one off, and uh, I, that was completely unintentional. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I do love me some Crown Magnetar, and I would definitely recommend uh, their previous uh, full length, uh, the Codex of Flesh. But uh, as and I, I recommend that one just as much as I would recommend this one to anybody that's looking to get into some tasty technical deathcore. Everything bleeds by Crown Magnetar. Now, kind of scaling down the or toning down the technicality just a little bit, we're gonna go with something a little bit more meat and potatoes with deathcore, and that is Impuritan with Wrath. Now, I remember, I think I first heard about these guys back in the 2015, 2016 or something or other when they had their self-titled EP around that time. And, uh, you know, I thought it was, you know, pretty fun. Um, just little meat and potatoes deathcore. Uh, just, you know, good bangers on there. And uh, this one, I feel like they've kind of uh, expanded upon that a little bit. But, you know, it's still just as meat and potatoes, just knuckle dragging heavy as it gets uh songs that i would definitely recommend on here would have to be a child eater fever dream wrath and uh eternal perdition so uh yeah if you just want some just basic deathcore um you know without getting too uh crazy into a lot of the uh more modern uh, common tropes uh, associated with deathcore these days and i would definitely recommend uh wrath by uh, impuritan all right, next up we have a band that I was just uh, getting into this year, and uh, honestly, I've been kicking myself ever since, and I should have been listening to these guys a lot sooner, and that is Silosis with A Sign of Things to Come. This is some really tasty metalcore, groove metal, just, man, there, there's a lot of good things to be had on this album. I mean, the, the production sounds, you know, Nice and beefy, uh, everything you know sits uh, where it needs to be without you know fighting one another for space. And uh, Josh Middleton, man, he knows how to make some awesome riffs, and the man's also uh, got a good ear for guitar tones as well. Uh, I would know that. 
Actually, I do use is a uh, is one plugin there, which uh, sounds absolutely awesome, and it's one that I rec one that I would definitely recommend. Uh, but for things I would recommend off this album, I would have to say uh, Deadwood, Pariahs, Poison for the Lost, Judas, and The Godless Throne. So yeah, some really tasty, groovy metalcore by Silosis with a sign of things to come. And I just hope that's not a telling title because, um, well, we'll see what they have uh, with the next album, whatever that is. All right, so uh, getting back into the some just heavy knuckle dragging, I don't want to say unga bunga uh, type of music, but still just heavy knuckle dragging, just good old fashioned beat down deathcore. Well, not necessarily beat down, but some of the some of the breakdowns and stuff that these guys make are just absolutely. Yo, they're just absolute ass beaters. Osaya with Kairos. Now, I have been a fan of this band since um, since their debut full length, uh, Terra Firma, back in 2016. Despite that being a absolutely terrible year for me, these guys, like I said, they just make some just really really fun, real tasty, just straight to the point deathcore. Uh, there are a few technical elements uh, thrown in uh, here and there, and uh, I think this album, it shows this band uh, kind of expanding into a few other, well, trying out a few few new things, like I think one of the, I think the last song on there, uh, Hughes Refract, uh, has a little bit of clean singing on there, which uh, is something that uh, both sides has never really done, but I gotta say it actually works uh, you know, pretty well. Um, but mostly whenever I go for a for Osaya, I just go for like the heavy hitters, uh, such as A Great Nothing, White Feather, Inherited Sorrow, Kardashev Denied, Guardian, and uh, since they decided to tack on their, uh, uh, I forget what their, their EP was before that, but uh, all the songs from there are on here uh, towards the back half uh, with uh, Memento Mori and uh, Seeds of Despair. Um, you know, those are the songs I do like off that EP, but. Yeah, this is a you know, straightforward, another bit of meat and potatoes with a little bit of technicality thrown in. This is some good old-fashioned deathcore with uh, Iros by Osaya. Alright, now we're going to get into a little bit more just straight-up hardcore here with Jesus Peace, So Unknown. Now... I'm trying to remember exactly when it was that I first heard about these guys. Uh, now, actually, I think it was uh, around the time when the, the Acacia Strain uh, put out Slow Decay. Uh, the song uh, Seeing God had a guest appearance by Jesus Peace's uh, vocalist Aaron Hurd. And, you know, I thought, you know, he sounded absolutely, you know, ferocious. And, you know, I checked out uh, the band that he was in. Um, and what I saw was, you know, the one video by... 856 uh, on YouTube of uh, Jesus Peace playing. I think it was like 2018, 2019 or something other. And I was just like, oh, this is some really, really good shit right here. And I could definitely say the same thing about this album right over here. Uh, I mean, I did, I do love uh, their, their previous album. I, I really do like uh, the Oppressor uh, single. I mean, it's pretty much like the one song that a lot of people you know no, uh, by Jesus, like the staple for him. And uh, this this album, you know, is you know chock full of so many you know just straight up hardcore, sort of death metal uh, ish bangers. Uh, songs I would definitely recommend would have to be In Constraints, uh, Gates of Horn, Offering to the Night. Uh, that's a really cool little throwback music video. Uh, if you you know kind of notice the style that he use on there, and uh, the Bond. So uh, yeah, if you're looking for some just straight up, uh, you know, hardcore goodness, then I would definitely suggest uh, So Unknown by Jesus Peace. Alright, so kind of sticking with hardcore and kind of easing back into death metal a little bit, well, more old school death metal, we have Fuming Mouth with Last Day of Sun. Now, I am not super, super familiar with this band. Uh, I think I uh, first heard about them, you know, just going through some of Hate Five Six's uh, stuff, and uh, I mean, I, I I really didn't think much of much of them afterwards until I uh, you know noticed, until I saw somebody reviewing this album, and you know, they were talking about how it's pretty much like 
you know, old school death metal, you know, done so well with the tinge of hardcore uh, thrown in, and I sat down, you know, gave this album a proper listen, and I can definitely see where they're coming from. I mean, this is some really good, like, ODSM with, you know, hardcore elements uh, thrown in. Uh, mostly ODSM as far as the guitar tone is concerned, because, you know, you got that really buzzy, you know, HM2 uh, kind of guitar tone, which, hey, I'm, I'm a sucker for some good, you know, grindy chainsaw guitar tones associated with old school death metal. Or old school melodic death metal, rather. But uh, yeah, songs I would definitely recommend off this album would have to be Out of Time, I'll Find You, and uh, the title track, Last Day of Sun. But uh, yeah, if you're looking to get some of that old school death metal uh, you know, fix with a little bit of hardcore punky elements thrown in, then uh, look no further than The Last Day of Sun by Fuming Mouth. And I would definitely suggest uh, some of the other stuff too, especially the. Uh, 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 whatever the EP was. I, I know it's got Master of Extremity on there, which I absolutely love that song. Yeah, Last Day of Sun by Fuming Mouth. Alright, so we're nearing the end. I've got six more albums to go through, and uh, yeah, just like everything else on this list, these these last few are just absolute bangers. And uh, we're going to be talking about some just old school, like old school uh, death metal uh, legends, which Honestly, I really think they should have gotten a lot more recognition than a lot of the others, or at least be put on the same pedestal, but either way, we have Cryptopsy with Ezgamora Burns. Now, I've been a fan of uh, Cryptopsy, you know, here and there since, uh, I want to say like 2017, 2018 or something other, uh, when, they, when they started putting out their, uh, their uh, tomes of a, well, Book of Suffering, or Tomes of Suffering, or whatever those were. And then I went back and listened to some of their previous stuff, including uh, the rather famous uh, <laughs> None So Vile album, and I thought, okay, this is some really, really tasty, just absolutely crazy uh, death metal, straight out of uh, Canada. You know, just, I mean, <laughs> you, know, you always expect some you know, pretty good death metal out of, uh, out of Canada, or, or deathcore, too. Or at least Devin Townsend, though. Anyways, uh, you know th this album, you know, pretty much has you know a lot of the same stuff going for it as you know with the previous two EPs, and I'd even say as far as the self-titled albums, you know, just like you know a lot of tasty riff work, a lot of crazy drum uh, parts, and um, uh, Matt's uh, vocals on here. Uh, while a lot of well, I'm sure a lot of people were kind of uh, eh. On that at first, because you know they're they're like hardcore Lord Worm fans uh, from the beginning. Even uh, 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 once was not, I believe. Yeah, I think it was once was not. Um, yeah, I, I I think Matt does a really good job on this album. But yeah, songs I would definitely recommend off this album would have to be a uh, Lascivious uh, Undivine, Godless Deceiver, Ill Ender, Flay the Swine, and. Uh, Obesient. I hope the I hope they got I said that one right. I'm just just trying to read how how they had it spelled out there. But um, yeah, if you want some really tasty uh, you know, death metal that's not afraid to go just absolutely frantic on you at any time, then I would definitely suggest As You More Burns by Cryptopsy. Now talking about some proper death metal legends, we have Cannibal Corpse with Chaos Horrific. Now. I gotta say that I was actually really, really excited about this album uh, when they started putting out some of the singles on on there. And um, yeah, this is pretty much you know Cannibal Corpse is doing what Cannibal Corpse has been doing for <sighs> the past thirty plus years now, just making some you know quality quality death metal. Uh, even if some of the technical even if some of the technical bits has kind of um, Went by the wayside just a little bit since the, the departure of uh, Pat O'Brien back in uh, 2019. Uh, I mean, he, he's doing all right now. He's playing with X-Order. But, um, but yeah, with the addition of uh, Eric Rutan on their previous album, uh, Violence Unimagined, which I absolutely love that album too, it seems like with this album, both uh, Rutan and uh, Rob Barrett, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of playing off each other a little bit more, and uh, you can definitely see uh, that those two... 
you know, the, they know how to write some really good riffs. Uh, you put them in a room together, and they, you pretty much got this whole album right here. <laughs> you know, it's just chock full of bangers, uh, such as uh, the t such as the album opener, Overlords of Violence, uh, Summon for Sacrifice, which is one of my all-time favorites uh, on here. Uh, Bloodline, which is another really awesome song. I really love that slow, crushing opening riff. That dun 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 Yeah, my mom's not very good at uh, trying to show some of these things, but you know what I mean. Uh, let's see the title track, uh, Chaos Horrific, and uh, the last track, which is a little bit of a surprise here, Drain You Empty. It's got that. It starts off with this kind of like slow, drudging, doomier uh, kind of style for a little bit, and then it quickly shifts back into this, the, this absolute insane death metal that we all come to know, love, and associate with Cannibal Corpse. So, uh, yeah. Chaos Horrific by Cannibal Corpse. Uh, one that I would highly, highly recommend. As well as a lot of their other albums. And still sticking with Death Metal Legends, we have Suffocation with Hymns from the Apocrypha. Now, I can understand that a lot of people were pretty anxious about this album, mostly because, well, this is the only album, well, the first album, to not feature original vocalist uh, Frank Mullen, who uh, has retired uh, from vocal duties, or just retired from music altogether, uh, if I remember right. And they passed the torch over to new vocalist Ricky Myers, and um, you know we can put those uh, those worries to rest because Ricky he does a hell of a job on here. I mean, granted he's no Frank Mullen, he doesn't have that same you know kind of uh, roar that Frank does, but uh, what Ricky does bring to the table, you know, is just like those really deep growls, and I think they fit suffocation just so goddamn well, uh, if you ask me. Uh, the riffs and all that's pretty much what you come to expect with Suffocation, just like very fast, very technical, um, just very flavorful technical uh, riff work uh, between uh, between Charlie and uh, Terrence. But, but those two just absolutely tear it up on guitars. Uh, the drum drum work on here is also very tasty. The the bass work on here is just, just really awesome as well. Uh, everything about this album is just absolute just awesomeness from start to finish. Uh, songs that I would definitely recommend would have to be uh, Hymns from the Apocrypha, the album opener, uh, Perpetual Deception, uh, Immoral Execration. I gotta warn you about that song. If you plan on listening to this on earbuds, at least turn your volume down just a little bit because I'm afraid that that opening bass drop when the song kicks off might, might make your head explode. It's that powerful. Uh, Seraphim Enslavement, that one's a really awesome song. I really, really, really love that sort of, uh, I guess you could kind of call it a breakdown riff where, you know, they, they drop the, um, you know, the, the whammy bar on their guitars and just, just start descending with that one. It's like, oh, God, it's so good. And then uh, Delusions of Mortality. Um, yeah, there's a lot of bangers on this album, and, uh, well, those are actually some of my favorites, uh, ones that I would definitely recommend on this album, as much as I would recommend the album itself. So, uh, yeah, Hymns from the Apocrypha by Suffocation. Death Metal uh, Legends still doing what they do after 30 plus years. So this one had a little bit of a break uh, since the late 90s, but, uh, yeah, Suffocation. All right, next... Uh, I don't know if I'd really want to call this one a little bit of an oddball. I mean, granted, I'd say that Sleep Token was more of the oddball on this uh, this list, but hey, I actually do kind of like that album. But not as much as I love this album here, Omnibus One by A Dark Halo. Now, I've been a lifelong fan of uh, this band since uh, 2007, I believe, 2007, 2008. I uh, remember, you know, in high school, I had a, uh, the, I had two computer classes back-to-back, uh, -back, like third and fourth period uh, computer classes, and uh, there was one guy, and I don't know if he had the same exact classes that I did, or maybe he came in last, uh, the, the fourth period one, but he and I got to talking about, you know, games and music and whatnot uh, for a little bit, and, uh, you know, he, he gave me a couple of bands. Uh, I mean, I already knew about Static X, I already knew about Fear Factory. But what I didn't know about was A Dark Halo. Now, 
I didn't know that uh, these guys actually had some songs on the, I think it was uh, some GameCube wrestling game. I want to say it's Day of Reckoning, I believe. But I didn't have a GameCube at the time. But anyways, he uh, he gave me a couple songs off their, well, at the time, their one lone album, uh, Catalyst, back in 2006, 2007 or something other. And when I listened to those songs, I just absolutely fell in love. And much like Fear Factory, those get, these guys pretty much... Uh, these guys pretty much uh, tell me what's uh, what's supposed to be the most ideal form of uh, of, uh, of industrial metal. Um, these guys um, you know, actually do a little bit more uh, stuff in the vein of uh, cyber metal. Hey, I do love me some cyber metal every now. But uh, honestly, I really wasn't even thinking that these guys were even going to come back. Um, but I was wrong, and uh, I actually listened to this album. Well, most of the sound um, the past uh, few years or so because they started putting out singles, or rather putting out like uh, damn near every single song off this album, uh, little by little over the past, uh, what, five or so years until we eventually hit uh, the full length here, which dropped uh, like the middle of July of last year. And, um, I'll be honest with you, after I listened to the last uh, single, which came out maybe like a day or so before the album itself dropped, I pretty much skipped everything and went straight to the last track, and then I, then I went back and listened to some of the other tracks that was already on there, and yeah, it's every bit as good as I remember it being, even with a little bit better production, or a little bit, yeah, a little bit more refined production, I should say. Oh, uh, God. Songs I would recommend off this album. Honestly, I'd say throw a dart uh, at this album. Just whatever it lands on, just, just go for it. Just sit back and enjoy some good, you know, industrial cyber metal. But as far as favorite songs go, hmm. It's a bit of a toss-up. It's a little bit of a two-way tie for me uh, between the, um, the closing track, uh, The Disquiet, which... I mean, just just that opening synth bit right over there that leads into the the song, which is you know straightforward, kind of groovy uh, sounding, but still very very fun uh, album closer. And then one of the other early singles, uh, which is probably one of my all time favorite Dark Halo songs, uh, "Vector Unknown." Um, you know, it's just as straightforward um, as uh, the Disquiet, but it's a lot more. A little bit more atmospheric. It allows the sense uh, to breathe a lot more instead of it just being like, oh, they're, they're just like little background pieces, you know, alongside all the you know, heavy riffing and pounding drums and Dave Lowe Miller just screaming his guts at somebody or just trying to sing somebody or sing to somebody. And has got a hell of a voice. Uh, but of course, that song, Vector Unknown, has a guest appearance by Anna Hell from a on flight, uh, another pretty awesome uh, industrial metal band out of Russia, and I kind of like how uh, was it they both, uh, well, both Dave and Anna get kind of equal amounts of screen time uh, or whatever uh, on the song, where they're kind of going back and forth on the verses a little bit, and then they do a little bit more on this sort of chorus bridge uh, section before the second verse, and then the two of them, you know, just come in for this absolutely beautiful duet. Um, you know, towards the end of the song, it's just, ah, oh God, yeah, so yeah, if you want some good, good quality industrial metal, good cyber metal, then I would highly, highly, highly recommend Omnibus One by A Dark Halo. All right, next, uh, I'm sure some of you guys probably figured that this one's going to be on the list as well, but, uh, I really don't include video game soundtracks on here, but there's just something about this one in particular that, uh, yeah, after playing this game, after listening to the soundtrack so much and just having an absolute blast with it, there was no way I was going to leave this off my list. Brandon McKagan with the Troy Pang 2 soundtrack. Hmm... I mean, it's no secret, I do love me some Deathcore, I love me some just 
heavy ass breakdowns, and I do like me some good shooters every now and then. And this game, you know, has all three of those put together. Just a really killer soundtrack. Uh, I mean, it's not just like straight up, you know, ass beater after ass beater, you know, every so often. I mean, yeah, you do get some little ambient uh, kind of synthy pieces uh, breaking up the the soundtrack here and there. But uh, yeah, every single song on this uh, this album is absolute banger uh, from start to finish. Uh, as is the game itself, and it was, I'd probably say it might be one of my games of the year, if I'm going to be uh, perfectly honest. Even though I really haven't played that many games until they came out this year, um, I'd say this would probably be the one for me. But uh, yeah, some of my favorites off this uh, this uh, this whole soundtrack here uh, would have to be uh, Juggernaut and Company, High Caliber Welcome, DDoS, uh, Pandora Cafe, Gunge, uh, cesspool, waterworks. I absolutely love me some waterworks. Uh, Pillar of anomalies, uh, complexity, and as a bit of an oddball, server technician. Yeah, I know the uh, the metal uh, funk uh, song made its way in here is one of my favorites or <laughs> ones I would recommend. But uh, now I'm trying to go with a little bit of everything in here just to kind of give you guys an idea as to what to expect with the uh, Trey Payne Two soundtrack. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, if there's one thing definitely to expect, it's uh, one that I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend. Uh, if you're into that kind of, uh, you know, just crazy modern deathcore, like Brand of Sacrifice or Distant or, or whatever, you know, if you just love some just heavy-ass breakdowns or you like some really good uh, melodic bits or you like some of the more you know, kind of creepier sort of uh, atmospherics uh, thrown in, then I would definitely, definitely suggest this uh, soundtrack to any and I would definitely suggest it <clears throat> excuse me I would definitely recommend uh, the game to anybody as well uh, looking to get some really good gun foo run and gun just absolute insanity uh, put on PC and on the Xbox One and PS5 if I remember right yeah Brandon McKagan with the Trey Payne 2 soundtrack soundtrack is an absolute banger I <laughs> I don't know how else I could really end this. It's just, it's just a fucking banger. Alright, we got one more album here, and um, yeah. Some of you guys probably knew that this one was going to be on here, but there was no way that I could leave this one on. Yep, Cattle Decapitation with Terrasites. Now, I've been a fan of Cattle Decapitation since uh, 2015. Uh, I remember, uh, what was it, uh, not long after my first uh, gaming PC was kind of having a stroke over the next uh, several months, uh, <laughs> you know, having to swap out the graphics card or, you know, the power supply and all that, but yeah, I remember uh, listening to SiriusXM, uh, the Liquid uh, Metal uh, channel and I heard uh, Manufactured Extinct on there from the the, the Anthropocene uh, Extinction, which hey, that, that's a really awesome album too. And I listened to that song all the way through, and I was like, all right, so this is some really really good death metal, or rather death grind. And when I heard the vocals on there, especially the quote unquote singing bits, I say that because. Travis Ryan, he doesn't really consider that singing. It's more like a really, really raspy, uh, melodic. I think that's how he describes it. But yeah, when I when I heard that, I was just like, oh, okay, this is a this is a little bit out of left field, but uh, yeah, I, I can I can I can get behind this. I mean, I I can definitely get down to the some of this. And then I went back to their discography. Um, and yeah, I discovered a lot of really good Death Grind uh, albums, uh, for you guys. Uh, Humanure, which is probably what, well, which is still the freakiest album cover that I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, let's see. You also got uh, Karma Bloody Karma, which that one's a really fun album. Uh, the Harvest Floor, which was one of my top favorites uh, Cow Decap albums. Uh, Monolith of Inhumanity, which is still one of my top favorites uh, Cow Decap albums. And yeah, I loved every single minute of it until Death Atlas dropped in 2019. 
And yeah, I fell in love with that record almost instantaneously. I mean, that, that quickly became one of my albums of the year uh, for 2019. And it was a little bit of a telling album because, you know, yeah, I know, Bring Back the Plague, ha ah, ha ha, that whole thing, humanity sucks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, when this album dropped, or rather the singles of this album dropped, I was like, Ooh, okay. I'm I'm expecting some greatness here. Uh, you know, when the, when the whole album drops, and greatness is what I got with this album. Just pretty much everything that you know and love about Death Alice has been refined on here, just a little bit, just a little bit. I I wasn't sure if this album was actually going to top Death Atlas uh, for me, but um, after a couple of listens, I mean, I can kind of go back and forth between those two albums. I mean, they're, they're just that good. Uh, I mean, this one's a little bit more kind of mid-paced, a little bit more kind of groove-centric uh, compared to Death Atlas, where it was just a little bit more all over the place, but still, both of them are, very, are structured very, very well. And the songs, I'd say they're, you know, structured, you know, just as well as they were on Death Atlas. Um, songs I would highly recommend would have to be uh, We Eat Our Young, uh, Scourge of the Offspring, which I catch myself singing, to that, singing along with that chorus anytime it comes on. Just not with that kind of raspy, you know, goblin voice that Travis Ryan does. I don't know how the hell he does that. Uh, I don't know if I'd ever see myself doing that, though. But, uh, yeah, because of that man, and I'm, I'm not saying it's necessarily his fault, but because of that man, there's been so many people coming out of the woodwork and just doing all those tunnel throat stuff. Um which, I mean, some are, some are better at it than others, but, you know, Travis Ryan will still be the guy, you know, that, that absolutely, that, that pioneered the tone. Or, or as I like to call them in this case, cattle vocals. But, anyways, uh, Scourge of the Offspring, uh, Storm Upstairs, that one's really, really fun. Just, you know, knuckle dragging, just absolute beat down of a song. Uh, Aphotic Doom, which that one's also really fun. I catch myself singing along with that, uh, uh, with that sort of last bit of the song that uh by the lights of your lights of cancer shadow that little bit <laughs> uh soul nostalgia that one's also really really fun um i sometimes catch myself singing you know along with the, the end of that song as, as well and uh the album closer just another body uh, this one, I'd say it's a little bit more kind of spacey, a little bit more stretched out compared to, um, well, uh, the album Closer on Death Atlas. Death Atlas. Uh, <laughs> no, but I think they're they're both really, really good songs in their own right, and um, they're both on just absolutely fantastic albums. Yeah, this is one that I would definitely, definitely recommend to anybody that's looking to get into some cow decapitation with uh, Terrasite. And with that, that wraps up uh, my albums for 2023. I know there's like a ton that I've probably missed. Uh, I don't know, maybe I really haven't uh, sat down and gone through absolutely everything on, on here, uh, here. But uh, yeah, if you guys uh, got any albums that came out in 2023 that I think that I should have listened to, uh, feel free to put them down there in the comments uh, down below. So. Um, yeah, 2023 has been really, really good for music, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the year itself has been a little bit up and down for me, but anyways, just hoping that 2024 at least uh, has uh, some, just as many, if not more, uh, awesome albums as uh, 2023 did. So, um, yeah, until then, I'll see you guys later. You know, have a happy new year, and uh, let's just hope uh, the 2024 treats as well. So, see you guys.